Once again, the farmers of America are facing a summer of labor shortages, even as thousands of farm workers are refused entry into this country. And as Luke Burbank tells us, some farmers have had enough. You guys still haven't finished your row. You're kind of slow over here. Oh man, we're trying to clean up everything that we've left. Too. <laughs> Thank you. Something unusual happened a few months ago in an asparagus field on the Oregon-Idaho border. Oh, you did 6,000 people showed up on a Saturday for the chance to pick some free veggies. I'm a big fan on community, so it's really cool to see so many people out here. And Do you guys like eating asparagus? No, no. <laughs> yes, yes. It's hard, and I'm 80 years old, so. <laughs> yeah. Some needed the food. Some just wanted to get outside on a spring day. But most had never picked asparagus before. I hope I'm doing it OK. Well, it looks like you are. Okay. Which is where Shea Myers came in. You want to cut it deep enough so you don't see it anymore? See how the dirt fell over it? Myers, so the farmer that, whose family uh, owns the field, um, home, had been sleepless idea. for days um, and getting ever more agitated well, on TikTok. I need this video to go out and for people to see it and understand the ramifications of what's going on at the border and the lack of labor that we have in this country. Agitated that he couldn't hire enough people to pick the asparagus crop, some $180,000 worth. So instead of throwing it away, he gave it away and created a viral moment. I put it out there with the idea, I think we thought we'd have five or 600 people come. We never thought, like 6,000 wasn't even in the realm of reality. Myers says that one day cost him and his family their entire asparagus profit for the year. But that's what can happen when you're reliant on an increasingly scarce labor force coming in from Mexico. Farm laborers are so critical to our actual life on a daily basis. I mean, they're, they're picking the food that's on your dinner table. That day in April, Shea's workers from Mexico were stuck at the border because of a holdup with their visas. The H-2A guest worker program gives agricultural workers temporary visas to come from abroad if farmers can't find enough domestic workers. In case you were wondering, Myers Farm pays around $16 an hour for farm work. It's hard work. And culturally, as a nation, we look down, I think, on, on um, field workers and, and the, the type of work that's done in the field for some reason. And so it's, it's, it is, it's a catch-22. Myers and farmers across America are grappling with the fact that it's almost impossible to grow fruits and vegetables without farm workers. Myers is a third-generation farmer. His grandfather started the farm in eastern Oregon with a single borrowed tractor and some rented farmland after returning from the Korean War. Nearly 50 years later, Owyhee Produce, as the company is now known, runs a state-of-the-art operation. How many onions do you guys produce in a year? We will produce about 2 million 50-pound bags per year. 2 million bags? 2 million bags. Something in the 200 million onion range, I guess, if we're going to do on an onion basis. That's a lot of onions. And every single one of those onions is photographed by this $3 million machine, operated by the steady hand of Eliana Ramirez, who does QC, or quality control for the farm. She got her start in the field. I remember I was planting onions, and one of my friends calls me, and she's like, hey, there's a one position open for QC. Do you think I, you can do it? And I was like, I don't know, because... Uh, my English is not that good. Myers convinced Ramirez that she could do it and even gave her time off to complete a college degree while she was working. They're giving me some opportunities that actually I never had in other jobs. They see the qualities that I have before actually discovering by myself. <laughs> Myers says he feels it's important that agricultural workers have something to work towards. As an employer, I want people to have a future, and I gotta know that they have a future because it's not very rewarding to do your job. Weeding in the fields or cutting asparagus or pitching watermelons or whatever they might be doing and 
consider or, or think that they have nowhere to go from there. What time did you come out the field this morning? Six o'clock. Back in 1960, when Edward R. Murrow documented the plight of farm workers in the documentary Harvest of Shame. These are the forgotten people, the underprotected, the undereducated, the underclothed, the underfed. We should like you to meet some of your fellow citizens who harvest the food for the best fed nation on earth. Migrant workers followed the harvest. What do you want most for your children, Mrs. Doby? Well, I'd like for them to have a career, whatever they'd want to be. These days, Murrow's migrant workers have mostly moved up the economic ladder, leaving agriculture to immigrant workers with some agricultural economists estimating that in order to get Americans to work in the field, farmers would have to pay something like $23 an hour. People who are like eating their breakfast right now, what are the chances that, you know, vegetable that they're having was picked by somebody who isn't legally documented in this country? 90% probably. I mean, it's, it's the majority. If it's not an H-2A program, the majority of the people doing the work are likely undocumented. I think most people would agree with me that it doesn't make sense that we depend on a workforce uh, who can't even remain here legally. It's not easy for the farmers, it's not easy for the workers, it's far from ideal. Diane Charlton is an agricultural economist at Montana State University who's studied immigration and agriculture. There is currently a bill in Congress to try to reform the H-2A program to make it easier for producers to use that program, to provide a path to citizenship for those who participate in the program. Unfortunately, uh, there have not been better solutions for many decades. But reforming H-2A wouldn't actually help undocumented farm workers, which Myers says are the majority and are not actually legally permitted to work in the United States. As human beings, how can we argue against them being able to have the same opportunities that we have. For Myers, a self-described staunch conservative, one of the first changes he'd make would be to give immigrant, undocumented workers a path to citizenship. They came here with a dream. They came here to make a difference for their family. They came here to improve their lives. They, they put food on everyone's table. They should have a way, a path to citizenship. There's no question that they should have a path to citizenship. The simple fact is that a lot of the food that we eat in this country is picked by people who are often invisible to us. People like Maricela, who we caught up with while she was picking asparagus. And she had a message for the people watching this story. Well, nothing more than don't be racist towards us. If you'd like to come here, we can teach you to cut asparagus. Nothing more. We just want to come here and work.